Monday night football coming your way from Gosford as the Central Coast play their final home game of the season against the Western Sydney Wanderers. Some Mariners fans have brave, wintry, wet conditions here. Chris Beef, the man in charge tonight. Lovely little nutmeg from Nikolai Muller. Not too many options. Waits for Tate Russell to bomb on down that right-hand side. And Tate Russell tries to blast it in. Birigitti got a little fingertip on that one to tip it over. Another super save. That was a fantastic save. Third time in the space of about five minutes down. Western Sydney Wanderers right. Mariners left. And we spoke about that. They're overlading this left side. Stensness can turn. Silvera. Jurich capable of hitting them from here and onto the crossbar via the deflection. It's out for a corner. Prendergast tried to react in time, but it's his woodwork that saves him. Such a danger when he plays. Every time when I come up here and I see him on the bench, I just think to myself, why? Tommy Orr. Whips it back post. Great delivery. Matt Simon. Jurich. The Mariners on top. Brilliant football from the Central Coast. They take the lead in their final home game of the season. Could it be a special night to say farewell in 2020? They take the lead and deservedly so. Wonderful play. Very, very simple. Great cross in here from Tommy Orr. Matty Simon cuts it back and tapped in by that man, Jurich. Lovely pass slid along the deck for Duke. And he changes the point of attack. Tank Russell. Wanderers should be able to keep it in. And their captain, Duke, back into the area. Kwame Yaboa on the turn. One Mariner slipped. Duke can have another go. Cox equaliser. The Wanderers level things up again. That combination between Duke and Simon Cox at your service, says the Englishman to those Wanderers fans on the far side. And the Mariners fans throw their heads back in frustration. No win in their final home game of the campaign, but another point earned and a point scrapped by the Wanderers as well. They want to win games, but in the end, a point keeps them in the mix for a spot in the finals this season. Hello and welcome to Wanderers Live. I'm Michael Turner, your host, and it's great to be with you this evening. We're here at Bankwest Stadium for the first time in a long time as the Wanderers prepare to take on the Wellington Phoenix in an important clash in the race for the finals. As we opened, we saw some footage of the disappointing draw against the Central Coast Mariners up in Gosford earlier this week. Hopefully a different result for the Red and Black tonight. We're also talking to broadcasting legend Tim Gilbert about what he's been up to with the club, as well as Wanderers Chief Executive John Satsumas, as well as Rob Shahidi. But most importantly, we're talking all things Wanderers related. Now let's talk a little bit about our opponents, Wellington Phoenix, here tonight. They've only lost one in seven. Their last match was a one-all draw against Adelaide. That was actually here the other, the other week. A 2-1 win over Perth the week before that, and of course a 3-1 loss to Sydney FC before the break. Now, on your screens, we're about to see the last matches up against the Knicks. The Knicks are actually looking to complete the clean sweep. They had a 2-0 win uh, in January at Sky Stadium, as well as a 2-1 win in December at Eden Park. Now, let's talk a little bit about the stats between the two sides. Now, in, in the between the two in the league, there's been 28 goals for the Wanderers. The Knicks more prolific in front of goal with 37. Shots on target, the Wanderers with 41.2%. The Wellington Phoenix with 45.7%. Big chances. 43 for the Wanderers with 53 for the Wellington Phoenix. Big chance conversion, 37.2 and 47.2 uh, for the Wellington Phoenix. Now, they are the more prolific side out of the two, uh, the Wanderers and, of course, uh, the Wellington Phoenix. But, of course, they are currently second and uh, it is their best ever finish to a season. Let's talk about their last match, of course, 1 1 at Bank West. Marinovic uh, made a number of key saves for them, but he did lead the counter attack for Wellington's goal. They are very good at passing out from the back. 
And of course, that was Josh Shatira, former Wanderer, coming ahead with that goal. They did have a chance to win it, but Sevilla wasn't able to convert the penalty, unfortunately, for the Knicks, and they uh, had to take the point against Adelaide United. Let's look at the match tonight. Of course, it is all to play for. Last ditch play for finals football for the Wanderers. The Wanderers are currently 9th with 27 points. The Jets are in 8th with 28 points. Western United 7th with 30 points and Adelaide 6th with 34. Of course, all to play for. Let's see what it means for the red and black. And of course, let's review the season that's gone past. With a brand new headquarters and a state-of-the-art stadium, the 2019-20 season was a real homecoming for the Western Sydney Wanderers. And didn't it start out with a bang? After three rounds, the Red and Black sat top of the table with an opening win at home against the Mariners, an away win against the Victory, and for the first time in two years, a Mitch Duke Thunderheader gave the Red and Black the win in the derby against Sydney FC. At the reborn Wonderland, it's the captain! It was all coming together and everything was right in Wonderland. But the good times did not last. Heartbreak ensued for the Western Sydney faithful with late goals against City, he just cannot miss, can he? Wellington and Western United Would you believe it? One, one. cost the Wanderers pivotal points as the final series began to slip away. A glimmer of hope with a chaotic and passionate win away against Adelaide United did not last and after one win in 11, a sole Fornaroli goal at home resulted in the departure of Marcus Babel. JP Di Marini was then handed the reins as interim, with the uphill task of resurrecting the season. New signing Simon Cox got on the score sheet with a 3-1 win over the Mariners, followed by an emphatic 5-2 win over Adelaide, before a historic second derby win gave the red and black hope. And after a few months in the wilderness, we returned in a new world and a new lifeline. Now we face a resurgent Wellington side looking to complete a clean sweep. We return to Bankwest Stadium as underdogs, down but not out for the count. The Knicks sit second, their best ever finish to an A-League season, and it's time to spoil the party. At 7.30 Friday, our season is on the line. A spot in the finals is on the line. Our pride is on the line. Well, yes, it is all on the line for the Red and Black tonight. The race for the final series heats up. It's a race for six. And let's see who's going to do battle in that one. Let's look at tonight. Starting 11 for the Western Sydney Wanderers. The lineup's coming up on your screen right now. In goal, number 50 is Tristan Prendergast. Defence is number six, Matt Yeoman, alongside Dylan McGowan and Patrick Ziegler. On the, on the wide flanks, number five, Daniel Georgeski, along with Tate Russell, number 33. In the midfield, we've got number 17, Keanu Bacchus, number eight, Jordan O'Doherty. And up the top, we've got Nikolai Muller, Simon Cox, and of course the captain, Mitch Duke. On the bench, we've got number 11, Bruce Kamau, number 13, Tass Mordekutis, number 19, Schwegler, number 22, Sullivan, number 27, Kwame Yaboa, number 30, Mo Adam, and number 40, Nick Saman is the second keeper. Now we've just had the players come up and they're just warming up behind us of course. One of the key items to mention is that Simon Cox returns to the starting lineup. He came off the bench last week. Women Schwegler is still on the bench for this game. But a strong lineup all up for the Western Sydney Wanderers. They look raring to go. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to you guys shortly after this.
Well, welcome back to Wanderers Live. We'd also like to thank, uh, the, take this opportunity, of course, to thank our major partners, co-major partners, Centuria and JD Sports, along with senior partners, Mitsubishi Electric, Pepper Money, Nike, Herbalife Nutrition, Westfield, EISS Super, McDonald's and Blacktown City Council. Thank you also to our category partners, Club Marconi, Intermain, Mate, The Coffee Emporium, Transport for New South Wales, Ola Cabs, Turner Freeman Lawyers and Western Sydney Uni University. We'd also like to acknowledge our foundation, business and charity partners. Don't forget, of course, to join in the conversation tonight using the hashtag WSWLive. Thank you everyone, of course, who's got involved so far. We've got some of the uh, best of those coming up on the screen. Thank you to user at Sprint98. He's uh, obviously at the game. The first game back here at Bank West. Thank you very much for sending that in. A great view, of course, from that uh, Western Grand, uh, Eastern Grandstand there, of course. There's not a bad view in the house here at Bank West, so hopefully you enjoy the game. Now, we've got a special guest joining us tonight. Please welcome the illustrious broadcaster and Wanderers fan, Tim Gilbert. Tim, welcome to the show. Michael, nice to be here. How are you? I'll come in a bit. We've got come to make sure we social distance, but about, about there, right? That's, that's perfect. A bit of space between us, of course. But, Tim, now, first things first, the Wanderers are launching a new podcast, and, of course, it's something you're involved in. Tell us a little bit about this new show. It's really exciting, actually. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will launch We Are the Wanderers of Western Sydney, and we're going to talk to, look, a whole stack of people, really, from the players to the coaching staff to those in and around the Wanderers, those high-profile people that love this team. Uh, I've already done one with, uh, we just saw up on the big screen, actually, Kirsten Hamilton, um, live from North Carolina. And uh, it's a really interesting discussion with her about her life, her career, her ups and downs, her challenges. And quite often when people see sports people like her, player of the year, they think, oh, things are always fantastic. But she spoke to us about some of those moments in her career where she thought, is it worth it? Should I toss it in? She had a wonderful time out here in Australia. We, we talk about her favourite restaurant. <laughs> um, so, look, yeah, Kirsten is, is the first. There's so many people to talk to over the course of time. And we'll just peel back the surface on, on the Wanderers, which is essentially one big family. It's a big yeah. family club, and we will go and have a chat with, with all members. So all the big stories behind the scenes. So really, the members get a real good chance to actually see what makes the players tick and the staff tick and what happens with uh, the red and black. Oh, absolutely. And, and it won't be just five-minute interview you're talking about 25 minutes so we'll talk to we'll talk to members of the women's team the coaching staff the men's team um, and we've got a, a quite a pronounced list it's about who we don't talk to rather than who we do talk to because there's so many people that have got great stories to tell and over the course of the next little while we'll bring them to our members uh, all about this wonderful uh, club. You've actually told a few stories already for us. Now, some of the fans would have seen the interview you did with uh, JP DeMarini, the big boss, and of course Mitch Duke's the one coming up, but I want to talk a bit about the boss first. Now, what is the target for him for the rest of the season, based on your conversation? For Jean-Paul, to keep winning. Uh, I spoke to Craig Foster about Jean-Paul and he said he's a killer. Mm. And look, I know him personally, obviously, like a lot of us do, and he's one of those competitive guys that has winning around him. And that's what he wants to do. Obviously, it's a huge game tonight. Yep. Uh, one all draw the other night. They just want to keep winning. And if, if the team keeps winning, it's congested, isn't it? I mean, the whole world has been wobbling on its axis. So mm. everyone needs to try and deal with what's going on. Yeah. And the Wanderers, for the next few weeks, days, whatever it is, just got to keep winning. And I'm sure that that's what his mindset is. Excellent. As a coach, he'll just want his team to get out there and finish on the scoreboard. Well, that's great news for all Wanderers fans to hear. Now, you did also speak to the captain, Mitch yeah. Duke. Now, that's coming up, of course. But what was the focus for the boys and the feeling in the camp now that they're returning to live football? I think they're all very excited. I know they're all very excited. And he spoke for the team, uh, spoke about the challenges of uh, dealing with the period where they weren't playing it. Uh, I don't think that period was easy for anybody, no matter what job you did or, or what age you were. So he gives a really interesting insight into that period. Uh, one of the things I really found interesting about Mitch too is he's one of nine kids. Mm. So as the captain of the Wanderers, <laughs> it's not always easy to uh, 
get everyone tickets, so they've got to go on a bit of a ballot system. Yeah. But uh, look, a fascinating individual. Um, uh, went to Japan, went to the coast, and he's back here. A Western Suburbs boy captaining a Western Suburbs team, which we're all very proud of. And uh, yeah, it's a fascinating discussion because, uh, yeah, but to answer the first part of your question, they're all very excited about being back playing uh, what they love. Excellent. Well, that's great to hear, and it sounds like the boys are raring to go. Tim, thank you very much for joining us on Wanderers Live. You can, of course, catch that full interview with Mitch Duke on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, of course, the Wanderers website. So definitely check that out. But in the meantime, we've got a quick snippet for you. Tim, thank you very much Thanks, again. Michael. Cheers. Mitchell Duke, the captain of the Western Sydney Wanderers, a Socceroo and the Duke of Parramatta, known for his leadership, flexibility, and being able to rise to the occasion when it matters most for the Red and Black. He first joined the Wanderers midway through the 2018-19 season, scoring second into his debut against the Newcastle Jets. Into the near post! How about that? And was named captain six months later. Since then, he starred for the Wanderers, hitting the back of the net 11 times this season and doesn't plan on slowing down any time soon as the Wanderers charge full steam ahead for a final series berth. Tim Gilbert sat down with Juki through the week at the Wanderer Football. How good is it to be playing again, Mitch? Mate, unbelievable to be fair. Like as a footballer, you want that stimulation, uh, you're used to a routine. Um, and just to be able to do what you, what you love again is, is the best feeling in the world. I think it's probably the longest break any footballer's had from the game. Something new for me, but you kind of use it as a learning experience. You know, so I'll, I've been learning on the way and making sure I can better myself, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch with the boys and the, that communication side of things and the mental side of things uh, to better everyone and make sure, you know, I'm doing right by them. Uh, it, was a, it was, yeah, a learning experience, but not easy for sure. What about when COVID-19 hit? It, it sideswiped everybody. Yeah, with how unpredictable the scenario was with things changing every day, it was a hard adjustment to, to deal with, but Lucky enough, I have a small family that kind of kept me kept me through it. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, sideswiped us all, and I think everyone's in the same boat uh, all across the world. So it was a bit of an adjustment. Um, but in saying that, I also turned it into a positive and enjoyed that extra family time. Um, that extra time that I had with my four-year-old was uh, a massive enjoyment for me. Welcome back to Wanderers Live. I'm joined by Wanderers Chief Executive John Satsimus. John, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Michael. Now, before we get into it, football fan to football fan, I have to ask, now, I guess I'm throwing a little bit under it with this question, but how do you think we'll go tonight against such a strong Knicks side? Well, Quillington have been exceptional this year and um, have certainly been a big challenge for our boys. Uh, we had a game the other day and uh, there was a bit of rust in the performance and we mm. anticipate them being showing a better performance tonight. Yep. Well, that's good. Hopefully, I share your optimism and hopefully we will come away with the three points. It is very important tonight, of course, the race to the finals. Now, COVID, of course, has been tough for everyone, but what has been a bit glossed over is how it is for you guys at the club and, of course, the staff and the effect of that. How difficult has it been for you guys at the club going through this period? Yeah, it's a good question. It certainly has been challenging in terms of uh, no different to everyone else in society. Um, business of any organisation and, 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 and society in general has been affected. 
Um, staff have been, it's been tough for them. Um, it's been start tough for the players, but um, we've got a good group of staff and a good group of solid group of players, and they all understand the, um, what the scenario was, and uh, we worked through it together, and uh, uh, the product is uh, that we're here tonight, and I'm thankful for that, and uh, hopefully looking forward to, to, to the future. Mm. And hopefully things improve, of course, as a, uh, in general society, so that uh, we don't have to make some of these tough decisions and, and go through these tough times. Now, there have been some speculation about some of the players and, of course, yep. contracts. Now, what are some of the complexities that the club are actually having to go through with respect to contracts and transfers in this current climate? Yeah, it's an interesting situation at the moment, um, um, and we've just touched upon the future. We don't know what the season next year may look like at this stage. We got, we're in discussions at the moment, we're in discussions with the PFA, the FFA, um, and a number of parties, including the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of elements that are, that are crucial to this, and no, uh, no uh, less important is the salary cap and what that may be in the revised competition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're hopeful that uh, we'll get some resolution to that very soon, and we'll, that we'll understand. We've got some players that are contracted at the moment, and uh, we really understand what the, what the space is, so we're able to, to embark on our recruitment for next season. But it's more we're excited, we've announced the coach, and, mm. and uh, we're certainly looking forward to whatever the season may be to be very favourable. Very good insight for all Wanderers fans, a little bit behind the scenes there. there. JT, thank you very much for joining us again, and uh, enjoy the game. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, let's look at the key matchups tonight. Going head to head is Devere and Nikolai Muller. Let's look at the key stats between the two. Nikolai Muller has six successful crosses, equal with Devere's six for the Wellington Phoenix. Now, don't forget, Nikolai Muller has spent a little bit under half the, the amount of time in the A League as Devere has. In terms of crossing accuracy, Nik Nikolai Muller sits at 40%, while Devere a little bit lower with 17.1%. In terms of assists, he's on with three assists. Devere with five, so a little bit more prolific up the top there. Now tonight's player to watch is of course Nikolai Muller. Let's check out this short clip. Yes, of course. It was a long time without football and now we are back and it feels good. Yeah, physically it was okay, but I think we are not happy with the result in our performance and uh, we, we can uh, do it better, and, but it uh, feel, feels good that uh, I can uh, play again on the pitch. And For us it's clear that this is the final for us, we have to win the next game to uh, happen to, for the finals um, and we, we have nothing to lose and we have to give everything uh, 100% and yeah, we have to win, this is, uh, this is clear and that uh, just the three points bring on uh, better in the table and this is the most important thing to win this game. Um, for me, at the moment, I think it's the best team in the league. Um, they, I don't know, they lose maybe one game it's against Sydney FC, but they have a long streak, win streak, or don't lose games, and they play a very good uh, ball, and I think they're, for me, the best team at the moment. Yeah, we have to do everything 100% and uh, stay together as a team, and we, we show this last uh, games against Sydney FC, we can beat everyone but we can lose uh, everyone, so yeah, we have to uh, put everything in the game and, and, and help the team and uh, I give everything to help my team and that we are, uh, uh, win the games. Yeah, I can't wait, uh, looking forward to be back in the Bangor Stadium and with our fans and crowds and yeah, it feels good to come home. It was a long time, the last game and yeah, it feels good. Welcome back to Wanderers Live. I've got one final guest, last but certainly not least, I'm joined by Rob Shahidi. Rob, welcome to the show. I'm loving it, man. This is like, I was just walking past the stadium 
and uh, someone hooked me up, one of my cousins with tickets, so here I am. Oh, that's awesome, mate. Yeah. Very lucky opportunity. I'm sure one of the many cousins hooked you up there. Now, it's great to see the unofficial mayor of Parramatta grace us with his presence. How good is it to see live football back in your home city? Yeah, I love it. I, uh, I've been a, a Parramatta boy uh, all my life. I have not left the area. And um, to see live sport again is very exciting. It's good for the mental health. Mm. Uh, being shut down wasn't really good and um, it's good to have it back. And, you know, being the unofficial mayor of Parramatta, I, you know, I'm hoping to get a bronze statue outside <laughs> the Bankwest Stadium. <laughs> yeah. do, do you think there's an... I mean, I don't know if your viewers there... If you think I should have a statue of myself <laughs> outside the stadium, I know there's one of Ray Price out there, but, you know... Yeah. I, mean, I reckon I could have a kebab in my hand or something. <laughs> I don't know. What do you reckon? I definitely think it's a chance. I think there are some very worried uh, ex club executives standing behind, walking away, shaking their heads. Don't worry. We've got a thumbs up. I Don't think worry. you've got the go-ahead. Johnny's Greek. is Greek. He understands. He'll call it a Euros. <laughs> yeah. There's a debate there. Who actually invented it? <laughs> there's the Baklava Wars. Who invented that? I mean, there's a lot of things. You know? Yeah. So, what's your background? My background? Half Asian, half English. Jeez. That's a mix to get your head around, isn't it? Jeez. We don't have, I just call it a kebab. So I'm with you, I'm okay. in that camp. So it's you're a, a scientist or you're a doctor on the doll? I'm neither. Fair enough. <laughs> That's why you're I'm like here. You're a fruit salad. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. My parents are very uh, unhappy with me, but... Can I say hi to my aunties and yeah, uncles? Feel free. That, hi, everyone. Hi, hi. Hi, good thanks. <laughs> now, you're a massive sports fan, right? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure I've seen you at... I won't name the teams here, but I've seen you at so many different sporting events. Is there any sport you don't even watch? Um, I actually like it all. Yeah. I'm actually, I actually used to play sport. I was like a, I don't know if you want me to say the sport. Go for it, go for oh, it. I used to play rugby union, so oh, yeah, yeah. I was like one step from Wallabies. So um, Not many people know that. They probably think I'm telling a joke, but I did play rugby. <laughs> I played for Australia. I played for New South Wales yeah. in juniors, under 19, 21. So, you know, it's, uh, I love it. I love sports. What so. about golf? I don't like, I'm too tall for golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a golf um, club in my boot of my car. Oh, yeah. Just in case you want to go for the occasional driving run. Oh, okay. Well, Just for security reasons, you know what I mean? Let's go back on topic. What do you think tonight, score predictions? We're playing the Knicks, top of the, they're right up there at the top of the table. They're doing well, but we're the underdogs, the plucky underdogs, the pride of Western yeah. Sydney. I, I'm, I'm going for a 2 1 win oh. for the Wanderers and. Um, because I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. And You're the I'm, lucky charm. That's right. So I think we can take them tonight. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And uh, up the Wanderers. Yeah. Unofficial Mayor of Parramatta, future bronze statue out the front of Bankwest Stadium, and lucky charm to the Western that's Sydney right. Wanderers. I like the sound of that. Hopefully three points for the Wanderers. Hopefully three points in the next game, of course. Members can redeem tickets to our next home match versus the Perth Glory, of course. Tuesday the 4th of August. Visit ticketech.com.au to redeem tickets. You need a valid 2019-20 membership to download your mobile ticket. For more information, you can contact the club. Visit wonderland.com.au. Was there something on that desk before? Thanks for having me. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Thank Enjoy you. the game. Up the Wanderers. <laughs> Of course, thanks everyone for tuning in to Wanderers Live. Thank you, Rob, for joining us. Of course, thank you, Tim and John, for, for uh, jumping on the show as well. Thanks to all our loyal members and fans for tuning in. Don't forget, there is a match to watch, so tune in Fox Sports 507 KO or the My Football Live app. You can also follow all the action on Twitter. Use the match, the hashtag WSWVWEL. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys all back here next Tuesday. Thanks for watching.